Hey, here we are at Animal Kingdom today. I'm gonna head back to the safari and do that first. I'm gonna record the whole thing, hopefully my batteries hold out. Um, two things coming in today. First of all, security. My bag set the thing off, which I knew it would because I have a painting kit in my bag and it's a metal, um, metal pallet. But second, I was in the line and you know, there's a lady, a few people ahead of me because same reason her bag set something off. But they not only emptied her bag and scanned her, they took like a half an hour and they scanned her two children who were nothing but shorts, t-shirts, and flip-flops. I, I don't know what the heck was going on. The lady who was directly in front of me, she made a comment about, you know, how she knows she didn't have anything metal or anything in her bag and, you know, she felt like this was kind of silly. She wasn't being mean. She just was like, come on, man, really? And the, the security lady very snarkily and nastily said to her, well, yeah, because being safe is a really horrible thing, isn't it? I wish I'd looked at her name so I could do the opposite of a cast compliment. <laughs> but on the other hand, I had a great photographer, Mandy, right at the, the front of the park. Well, not the front of the park, but where you can get your picture taken for the Tree of Life. She was a lot of fun. She's from Ohio also, Canton area, we talked about Ohio talk about how much more we like Florida. <laughs> it was, if, if she's around, you need to get her. She is a whole lot of fun. So let's head back to the safari and check out the critters today. Thank you, Ryan. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning, the earth says hello or something like that. <laughs> something like that. Uh. Yeah, remember friends on the right, watch the hands around, she likes to give a slide shut. There we go. Nice and correct. I mean, same. Yeah, same. Yeah, well, now I'm almost the dog moves right by the head. There's an animal spotting sheep, so some of the animals you should be able to see out there today. They may not be able to see every one of you asleep in the migration habits, but they usually have pretty good luck. Asante uh, Sana Warden. And as I say here in Harambe Twin Day, let me let's go. Let's go. And John Bo, everybody, welcome aboard. Welcome to come in, draw safaris over your safari driver today. My name is Gray, short for Gray, and long for Cup. A uh, couple of real quick safety reminders. We'll get out there on the reserve. Make sure you keep your hands, arms, feet, legs, all inside the safari at all times. Make sure always remaining seated throughout the entire safari. If you lose anything out of the reserve today, there's no real need to panic. Raise your hand in the air, give a good wave back and forth. Don't worry, I'll be able to see you. And then say goodbye to the item. I'm not stopping. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna hang out here for a sec. That old clear little head on in. There it is. Uh, anybody's first time? Nope. Nice. Well, good. Well, I'm, just, I'm just glad I'm not alone. <laughs> it's not, not like my real first time. Anyway, I'll go ahead and head Except on for in the incident. Oh, no. Oh, there's the first one of the day. Right out there on the right. Over by that bamboo. That's an okapi. The okapi, you might think, is like a relative of the zebra. There's white stripes in their legs and backside, but then you'd be wrong. They're more closely related to the giraffe. 
Tell it's in a unique skull shape as well as the fact you got a prehensile tongue just like the giraffe. How about two toed ungulates? The babies are cute. Now they also have oscones. Really, if you think they're unique, it turns out they're just a copy. Just making sure you're paying attention. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna be heading down here. Oh, by the watering hole. There's two two big birds right down there. See. Saddle hill storks. Pretty territorial birds. I don't really like any others anywhere near them. That's why you don't see too much around them. Real foul ones to be around. If you get a good look at their foul. eye colors, the females bright yellow eyes, males dark brown eyes, both are pretty territorial. Don't communicate in the traditional sense like a lot of other birds do with the chirping and squeaking and all that. Uh, they rattle their bills. Hmm. Cool. Oh, top of that hill, right hand side, there's a greater kudu. No greater kudu, you can tell it has a lack of horns. That's a species that forms very similar to the bongo. I think there's a picture of what they have up above you. Yeah. <laughs> Left hand side, kind of resting up against the rock wall, there's a black rhino. Barely see him, blended in down there. Oh, there he is. I need to point him out to your friends. That's all right. He's friends back 2, here. 3,000 pounds. No, that's hard to see. Anywhere from 22 to 33 miles an hour. Favorite speed anywhere from zero to one. No real natural predators to worry about out here. They do sadly suffer quite a bit from poaching and habitat mm. loss. Top of that hill, right hand side, there's actually a couple of bongos. I'm really expecting to see them out here. That is really cool. They're, they're known as the ghosts of the forest. Rarely ever seen. Took them about until about 1901 to even discover them. Oh wow. And those uh, stripes on them really uh, kind of cut up their body shape a little bit and make it free. Barely see them. I'll be heading out a little bit cheery, heading into the Sophie River, Sophie River. I nice home to animals like the Nile hippopotamus, Nile crocodile. Uh, you probably see a lot more birds up here. They're all kind of scared of the saddle. They'll rather hang out with the hippos. Right. Coming up on the edge of the Sophie River. Top of the water up ahead, and that's uh, hippo dung. <laughs> Lovely. Great indicator of hippo activity, you know. <laughs> now, the uh, birds out there with the real long bill, those pink back pelicans, get the name for the coloration. They're showing up on the back during mating season. Uh, when they're doing their little bit of preening and cleaning out the old dead feathers when they lift up their wings, you might see some of that pinkness down there. Colonial nesters are down in flocks up to 500 members. Ooh, out there on the left. Oh, there's actually oh, there one right he next is. to us. That's cool. Got that one way back there. <laughs> One of the smaller hippos. Not just cool, pretty hip, yo. Uh, if you get a good look at their uh, ears, eyes, and nostrils, you know, it's pretty much all in the same plane. Keep their body mostly submerged while still seeing, hearing, and smelling. That's pretty cool. Crocodiles got something similar going on. They really swim down there, just kind of sink to the bottom of their bed, walk where they gotta go. Look out here on the left and over the rail, and you'll be able to see that little bloated hippo, so we got to talk about beforehand. Oh, there they're they are. Sleeping. sleeping. That natural little reflex sets them come back up for air about every eight to ten minutes. Big waterfall just behind it. There's, there's, there's your really, crop. Uh, pretty big Nile crocodile. <laughs> there's some of the largest, not like the largest. You see the Nile crocodile is about 15 to 15 pounds. I could eat like that. Back through the forest here, sort of over there to the savannah, tall grass, just a big baobab tree coming up on the right. Massive tree, kind of a weird one. Our oaks, they are weird. Yeah. A lot of water in there. That's why they get the nickname Tree of Life, all that water inside them. I have another nickname, the Upside Down Tree, just because they kind of look like one going out the east about nine months out of the year. These are pretty cold on top of the branches look like roots. The giraffes are out. Uh, I heard on the radio uh, just a second ago, a bit of a giraffic jam. <laughs> yeah, once they start to migrate, they don't stop believing. That's why I like to call them a journey. Huh. See 
like my golden doodle. Yeah. <laughs> well, these termite mounds, they're pretty neat, by the way. I don't really mention them yet. About as hard as concrete. We made a three things termite saliva, dung, dirt. It's kind of gross. Don't worry, it's number, my gross. Voice, number two on the list. We've got some animals we use them like scratching posts. Well, he's determined anyway. Oh, yeah. Aw. Now, this one up there, they're just chewing on their cut. That's your gurgitate plant material. Stuck to eat five or ten minutes ago. Gives it a go around. Pretty much all the room that you do that. Oh, here's an Andy Coley coming up on the right. These guys are Close cool. 2,000 pounds. Now, they're 50 inches tall, give or take. Massive horns. Yeah, you think they'd be pretty heavy. They're uh, mostly hollow inside, but just the horns. That's the cavity. I think they'll structure it there. I'll just support a little photograph. Oh, there's some more giraffe. Another tower up here. That's what you call a group giraffe. It's a tower. Yeah. Now, a little further up past the tower, to the right there, there's some white bearded wildebeest. Very strong herd mentality with them. There's been some large migrations on the planet. Last day, we're up to 500,000 miles. This is the one, 1.5. You know, looks like one's gonna be uh, migrating across the road. Oh, they might all be doing that. Yeah. Back the other way. <laughs> they got the right away. Might be waiting for me to stop. Stop for you, buddy. No? Oh, okay. You're just gonna go that way. All right. <laughs> Changed his mind. <laughs> oh, he was gonna change his mind. <laughs> oh, got one left in the road. No, I should have. <laughs> yeah, let me let the ward know it'll be a little late. <laughs> 
Yeah. He's looking at you. Oh, you coming with us? All right. <laughs> Heading into some elephant territory. Large stealth here around 12,500 pounds. 12 foot at the shoulder. You definitely don't weigh and see him. Wow. I'm going to wrap this canopy if I can have that far. It's uh, top 12 foot on the ground. Long time to be pregnant. teenagers. Snoozing. When you can see them. Those are white rhinos. Nap time. Not from the coloration, but from the mispronunciation, the Afrikaans word bite means wide because the root wide, jaw wide. 
Might notice a subtle difference if you got a better with the black rhino, you know, a little cherry. I don't know why he did it, I'll explain it to you real quick. Yeah, black rhinos, they have a more pointy, triangular upper lip, and they use kind of like a little finger to grasp the individual bits of foliage. White rhino, much more elongated, they scoop up everything all at once. Huh. That's not a whole lot when it comes to grazing. I need to eat about double what the black rhinos eat, closer to 200 pounds of food a day. Oh, wow. Makes sense, because Full grown one, about 5,000, 6,000 pounds. Back rhino, right about 2,000, 3,000 pounds. <laughs> around 21,000 of them left in the world, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, though, the numbers are going up thanks to conservation efforts. Oh, left hand side, top of the hill, you can barely see them. There's a little cheetah up there, though. See, just past that sunny spot on the top of the hill. Laying out there. There's actually five of them out there right now. I'm trying to pick, find another one for you guys. They are really crazy hard to spot. So if you see one before well, I well, camouflage. Free, point them out to your friends, all right? Okay, let's see here. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, yep, right there. See the little head popping up in the middle there? Right there. Zero to 60 in about three seconds. Top speed is about 65, 70 miles an hour. They can't maintain that speed for very long, only about 10, 15 seconds. After that, they're exhausted. Claws can't fully retract. Dark circles around their eyes absorb a lot of excess light, natural little pairs, shades. They're pretty cool cats. <laughs> oh, get ready. Look on this left hand side, past these trees, but before that bush up there. Oh, there he is. There's a lion. Look at him taking a nap. Finishing up the cat nap. They only sleep about 16 to 20 hours a day. It's not turtle and everything. <laughs> I thought I saw a little ear sticking up back there. Probably the female lion. He is snoozing. Oh, it is. Yep. She's the one to do all the hunting. That's a good chase now for anything. I'm sure I've said weights don't count. It's really energy efficient. A couple of ostriches down there on the right. You want to get a good look at them. You do not want them ostracized. It's the only animal that scares your safari driver a little bit. The ostrich. I wouldn't want to tangle with one. Oh, you know. Mm -mm. About six foot tall, close to 200 pounds, inch long talons at the bottom of their feet. Top speed on an ostrich, about 35 to 45 miles an oh, hour. Oh, wow. Top speed on the truck, about five. <laughs> Those are burrows dug out by the warthogs. Could be in any one of those burrows right there. That'd be good at hiding whatever the prey item. Yeah. Not very picky eaters themselves. They eat just about anything. Very opportunistic, especially love root tubers and grubs, though. Slimy yet satisfying. Uh huh. Head <laughs> <laughs> we'll around here if we find anybody. If nothing else, we'll see these ostriches again. You know, you call a group of them a herd or flock, but it's technically true. They're flightless birds. Oh, is there a nest? Oh! Clutch of eggs. Wherever one lays an egg, they'll all lay their egg in about the same spot. Just keep track of them. Females tend to wander off after laying them. The males try to look after the nest. No males on uh, ostriches on the reserve. So the eggs just kind of hang out there. It's still a warden. They're actually going to be heading towards the warden's post right now. Nearing the end of our journey. Warden's looking after these little goat. Nigerian dwarf goats. They're pretty cool little goats. A lot of good enough work out here. You just buy anything. You see the meat, poison ivy, poison oak, briar bushes, real woody plant material. Arguably one of the cutest animals on the reserve. Definitely one of the friendliest. Yeah, goats they, are cool. You, you can pet them at that Rafiki's Planet Watch. Amongst some alpaca, llama, mesquite pigs, a couple of sheep, a cow. Probably forgetting some others. There's quite a few different animals over there. Pretty enough, it likes a lot of protein, lactose, it's really sweet, makes it pricey, but commodity, they just don't produce an awful lot, just a couple cups a day. Most of it's got to go to the kids. So. This next turn, we are starting to make our way out of the reserve, head back towards the dock. 
you ever want to check the seats, check the rooms, before we get up there, you know, make sure you got everything, phones, wallets, keys, keys, don't leave anybody behind, I've been here ever since. So anyway, we're going to six floors aboard, and we're right around symbol one, it's S-I-M-E-A-1, so that means lion, it's not Ely, you guys know I'm not lion, but I say I really don't miss you guys. <laughs> well, I don't want to say goodbye, wait till you say I'm final, it's kind of like a Swahili word, go off the winds can go well, and Sante Sana, and thank you for joining me out here today. Uh, I just want to go out there and see some more cool animals, and uh, wander around. I got the Gorilla Falls Trail, it's not too far away, it's just to the right, past the stroller parking area. Down there you see some gorillas, zebras, naked bull rats, deer cats, fish, birds, monkeys. They got a few deer. That's over in Asia, about a seven to ten minute walk in and traffic. I kind of can you some Sumatra tigers, water buffalo, coral dragons, giant fruit bats. It'd be a pretty good time to go right about now, just from personal experience when you see the cheetah and lions, both big cats, you know. You probably see that other big cat out there. Mm. Get that 